Gladiator, directed by Ridley Scott and starring Russell Crowe, is an epic film set in ancient Rome and stands out as one of the all-time great pieces of cinema. But like many historical dramas, Gladiator takes its fair share of liberties with history. So, with its sequel coming out later this year, I thought that it would be the ideal time to re-watch it and talk about some of them. Let's start with what might be the most obvious inaccuracy. The existence of the main character played by Russell Crowe, Maximus, or Maximus Decimus Meridius, to give him his full title. He was a complete fabrication for the movie. However, the character wasn't entirely conjured from thin air. Instead, he seems to be a complex mix inspired by a variety of real Roman generals, leaders, and perhaps even emperors. This includes Tarutianus Paternus, who commanded Roman forces in the decisive battle against the Germanic tribes in 179 AD, as seen in the opening of the film. Narcissus, the wrestler credited with killing Commodus, and Tiberius Claudius Pompeianus, a general who rose to favour under Marcus Aurelius eventually marrying his daughter Lucilla. Next, let's discuss the fact that in Gladiator, we see scenes where the fate of arena combatants is determined by Commodus with a thumbs up or thumbs down gesture. However, historical evidence for these precise gestures is sparse. The misconception likely stems from a painting by Jean-Léon Jérôme called Polis Verso in 1872, depicting the audience using the thumbs-down sign to signal the death of a defeated gladiator. Now let's talk about Commodus, the main antagonist played by Joaquin Phoenix. In Gladiator, Commodus is rightly depicted as a power-hungry, sadistic emperor. The film probably downplays how awful he actually was, doing things like publicly slaughtering amputees who were veterans of Roman wars. He was also merely 18 years old when his father passed away. Commodus was also depicted as tall, muscular and blonde. He honed his skills in gladiatorial combat, claiming an impressive 620 victories. These victories, according to his own accounts, are likely accurate, given that his opponents often yielded to the emperor. Moving on to weapons and armor. Gladiator is visually stunning, with fantastic weapons and detailed armor. However, some of the armor and weapons in the film are not entirely accurate for the time period. For example, the gladiator helmets with visors that lift up dramatically for cinematic effect are more reminiscent of the armor of the medieval era than what would have been worn by Roman gladiators. Gladiator also has enormous dart launchers and catapults, which are used to launch large projectiles, heightening the excitement of the opening scene in Germania, one of cinema's most epic opening battles. However, while catapults and ballistae were practical in sieges, they would be unwieldy in open battles particularly in dense forests. Finally, now that I've mentioned the Battle of Germania, let's have a closer look at it. This opening battle in the film is a thrilling spectacle, but the tactics and formations used by the Roman army are more reminiscent of later periods. The turtle formation seen in the film, where soldiers interlock their shields to form a protective shell, is not something that would have been used by Roman legions during this time. Also, archers served as auxiliaries in the Roman army and were not highly valued. Their bows lacked the power to pierce shields and armor from a considerable distance, so they did not rain down a barrage of arrows, fiery or otherwise, upon the enemy. Those were just some of the historical inaccuracies in Ridley Scott's Gladiator. While the film certainly captures the spirit of ancient Rome and delivers an unforgettable cinematic experience, it's important to remember that Hollywood often takes creative liberties with history for the sake of entertainment and cinematic spectacle. Did these inaccuracies bother you when watching the film, or did you simply enjoy the epic story? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more deep dives into historical films.